with stand up, how do you stay on script when you're doing the movie? Like, <laughs> Thank you, God it doesn't. No, that's my question. How does he? How do you stay on script? No, I stay, I stay on script. You know, that's the thing. People would, you know, they, they don't know that um, I stay on script when it's time to stay on script. Okay. <laughs> and, um, I, unfortunately, sometimes, you know, the writers can't give the flavor that I can give to them. So, you know, I, I, when it was necessary to say necessary things to carry the movie along, I'll say those things. That's right. Okay. But if I feel like I'm reading something and need a little flavor to it, I'll put, put my own on it. We like when you go off script. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We like it. Well, thank you. It's, it, it, it's, not, it's not that easy when you're actually in the scene, you're laughing with them. <laughs> <laughs> How do you handle that? Um, well, at that point in time, it's like, you know, we, we may do all the scripted stuff, and then um, whether Salim or other directors say, all right, Mike, you know, give us your best, or D-Ray, give us your best, or whatever. Like, you got the floor. And you just kind of you just kind of go with it. But at that point in time, like I said before, and I said before you came in, Mike, a lot of us knew each other before we came in. So in a situation like that, I mean, we already know what's going on. We already know what our, object our objective is in the scene or what have you. We know Mike, or the gym hanging out, working out, shooting hoops, having lunch together, hanging out after we, we, we rap. So when we get an opportunity to improv, we're just like, we're catch, it's a dance. So sometimes, sometimes that will be the scene that will make it to the final cut, which is cool because sometimes, you know, a writer will admit like, you know what, I was having really a lot of problems with that scene, but you just made it that much better. So, um, you know, just stay with him and, you know, let him rock the world. <laughs> so Liam is just a, a, a bit an artistic visionary. And um, his style is it, it, sexy, it's, it's edgy, and uh, it, it's a tough story. So, um, like as far as watching the game, um, time-wise, we don't really uh, have the time to really tell the story in a, in a, in a flowing type of manner, in, especially in the, in the newer season. And so, but I would be able to see like his style as far as you know the game is concerned. I was just like, man, I can't wait to catch into a movie. So when he he had uh, jump in the broom, it was like um, you know it was just kind of like you know I just picked up where I left off, started the game, going into the movie. And he just has like such a, a way um, of, of dealing with you as an actor, which is you know which is hard sometimes because you sometimes you may have a director who what he may want he may not be able to explain to you as to like what we need as far as the, the shot or the, the scene or or what have you. But Salim has like a real cool way of getting you to a place where you can give the performance um, above and beyond. So for me, it was just, um, you know, I was ready, you know, and I mean, these guys did their thing. I, mean, I saw them and it's it great. And I, I say all the time, um, since I started doing press that, I don't see anyone else in these roles and what Salim had did as far as getting each person to have their own individual voice as a character was amazing. It was a dream come true. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to work with Loretta Devine on this Christmas, mm -hmm. but uh, I've been such a fan of Angela Bass's work on pretty much everything she's ever done. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, and one of the behind the scene moments, obviously on screen, you know, I pinched myself a few times <laughs> and I would say to myself some little silent prayers like, thank you so much for that. <laughs> you know, but during the rap party, Angela pulled me aside and she said some words that really did touch my heart. And she just supported me so much and told me how she felt about the job that I was doing. Mm. And those are the things that you'll never see on screen mm -hmm. in the film or in the behind the scene mm -hmm. outtakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the things that I'll be an 80 year old man someday, you know, hopefully, <laughs> you know, sitting in a home somewhere and I'll never forget those words that she said. She just really gave me the kind of love that when you hear that from somebody that for the most part, you know, in many ways you've always looked up to as an icon. Mm -hmm. You know, and pray that you would get the opportunity to work with. Right, right, right. It, it just really made this movie that much more special. Well, working with Angela and Loretta, Angela being a personal friend of mine, she's one of my closest friends, and I've got we we go on vacation. You know, we like hang out. We have sister girl time, church time, prayer time, all that stuff. So when we found out we had the time to work together. She wasn't a friend anymore. She was like Angela Bassett. <laughs> I was like, I work with Angela Bassett, not my sister girl and I. 
share the room with, but this is Angela Bassett, you know? Uh, support of Loretta's character. She had every right, I feel personally, to feel the way that she felt. How many of you have seen the movie? Okay, so some of you know, if your son's not communicating with you, right. then you're gonna be upset, of Hold course. On. Right. Hold on. <laughs> In defense of my character, <laughs> because the backstory, which I don't know if if this is in the film or not, but every single woman that Jason has brought home to Loretta Devine's character, you she has that. found a way to run her off. You say it in the film. You, you explain it in the film. Right. And never look back. Right. You know, I'm, I grew up in a single parent home with a very opinionated mother. She's short in statue, but when she walks in through that door, you would swear she's 10 feet tall. <laughs> Half my life, I thought she could beat up every dude I know, including the thugs. <laughs> you know, that's what kind of strong black woman my mother is. And that strength also communicates in her opinions about the women that I date. And there is a point in time when, as a man, you have to stand up on your own and say, this is the person that I'm in love with. These are the qualities that they have that fulfill me and complete me. And I need your support on this. And I'm gonna do this regardless of what you say. Now, I unfortunately, <laughs> I have done that. My mom's been right about the person. <laughs> but it felt right when I was taking a stand in their defense. Oh, okay.